Before we get into large discussions in this course regarding biology, what we have to think about are some of the basics. You already know a lot about biology, I promise. But what we need to do is organize it for you so that it makes sense in terms of different aspects of biology, how you function, how the environment functions, and so on. So when we look at some of these early sorts of ideas, what we want to keep in mind is biology is often based in themes. And evolution is really the biggest theme in biology that we will keep coming back to over and over and over again. But what we have to keep in mind with biology is that to understand how life works, how you function, how the environment will work with you and sometimes against you, we have to have a very good process in place to study that. So we'll look at the process of science and what it means to have good science versus maybe not so good science, and then how biology can affect you in your everyday life. We're going to focus on this last part, affecting your everyday life, over and over again as we discuss things. So we'll keep coming back to these ideas. These will be important for you to remember throughout the entire course. So when we first look at biology, we have to keep in mind that as humans we try to put everything into categories. So often what you will see in biology is we spend a lot of time grouping things. And sometimes those groups are very small. They would only consist of a couple of organisms, maybe a couple of cells, maybe just a couple of atoms if we look at a chemical structure. But when we look at bigger picture things, these groups can become very, very large. So let's start out with thinking about some properties of life. So when we think about what it means to be alive, there's a lot we have to deal with. Okay, so we have to recognize that we are very ordered or very structured organisms. And not just you, all organisms that are alive are structured in some way. We'll spend the first couple of lectures in this course talking about that structure from a very chemical perspective. So looking at literally the chemical bonds that hold you together. We have to think about if the organisms are going to survive, they have to grow and develop through using energy. They're going to eventually have to reproduce. But this energy processing we'll spend a lot of time on. We'll look a lot at how you regulate your system. So how do you regulate your body temperature? We'll look at that and think about how that changes in response to your environment. How good are you at regulating your body temperature outside in January versus July? We'll look at that and think about that. How you respond to that environment has a lot to do with that regulation. So we'll look into that and, and how that might change not only in different organisms, but in different environments and so on. And then eventually we'll get into this idea of evolutionary adaptation or something we'll refer to later as natural selection. So we'll look at how particular characteristics that you have might be beneficial to your offspring and how would you pass those on to your offspring to, to give them an advantage. If we want to actually define life, it's kind of a weird thing to define, but here are some basic definitions that I found in random places online to share with you. So we look at whether or not you can use energy and respond to your environment. This internal environment maintenance is going to be highly variable um, depending on the organism. So we'll look and think about that. That you're based in DNA. Not all organisms are. We will look at some that are not. Okay, um, and they are made up of cells, or at least one cell. We certainly have some single-celled organisms that we'll talk about. That we've evolved from other living things. And we'll look at, eventually, how you get from what we consider to be abiotic, or non-living, 
to biotic or living organisms. And we'll look at that process a little bit. And certainly a level of complexity or organization associated with you that we certainly don't see in other organisms. And particularly we don't see in a rock or a building, right? Okay, so how are you more complex than that?